Now, with our area under a hurricane warning now for the first time since 1985 when Hurricane Gloria hit us, what can we expect over the next 48 hours? Here to tell us is Dr. J. Brett Bennington, the Associate Professor of Geology, Hofstra University. Dr. Bennington, welcome aboard here. Hi. With all the spaghetti tracks we're watching here, <laughs> yeah. uh, why, is it, why is it difficult to kind of zero in on where the storm is going to hit? Well, I think we actually know pretty well where the storm's going to hit. It's, it's just a question of a few tens of miles. Uh -huh. um, it's, in, it's of interest because hurricanes tend to be stronger on the right side of the eye, weaker on the left side of the eye. Mm -hmm. Also, the New York metropolitan area, the coastline is like a big funnel. Yeah. So if the storm tracks to the west, um, you get high winds driving water into that funnel mm -hmm. and a greater potential for flooding. If the storm tracks further east, there's less potential, or, or at least less severe potential for flooding. Is that just the rotation of the storm does it? That's the counterclockwise, mm -hmm. what they call the cyclonic rotation yeah. of the storm. So, yeah. when, so when we say Cat 1, what are we talking about here as far as wind damage? Well, you know... How high would the winds the, the be going? Technically, Category 1 hurricane has winds from 74, you know, 74 miles an hour and above. Yeah. Um, the storm may, may not be a Cat 1 by the time it, it gets directly over the New York metro area. Uh, so, you know, I'm not sure what, what kinds of winds we're going to see, but there'll be strong gusty winds and mm -hmm. potentially damaging winds. What's the expectation once uh, Hurricane Irene makes landfall in North Carolina? It looks like it's going to probably um, hit the Outer Banks pretty hard and cause a lot of coastal erosion, a lot of coastal flooding. Mm -hmm. But the impact to us, will it break apart? Is that the no, expectation no, no. once it hits once it hits North Carolina? It'll lose a little bit of its energy uh, as it crosses over land in North Carolina, but uh, it'll remain a, a well um, a well organized hurricane uh, as it comes up to us. And it has a potential to cause tremendous flooding. It's going to arrive in the New York area or start to impact the New York metro area during uh, high tide. Yeah. Typically, and how much of a storm surge do you get in a Cat 1 hurricane? Well, it, it depends on, on the tides and, and again, where, yeah. where the hurricane is relative to the coastline. The coastline has a, has a big effect. Can you go worst case, best case scenario here? If, well, if, if, um, if we're on the wrong side of the storm and it's at high tide and it's a category one? Best case scenario, four feet, six feet. Worst case scenario, 12 feet. Yeah. You not, know, 15 not, feet maybe. Not a lot of people are heeding the warning still and just think it's a lot of hype. You know, I spoke to my dad on the phone. We, you know, he lives on the Jersey Shore. He, he says, Sheba, this better be something because we've been on the news and telling people to pack up, and this has been right. the warning from right. our governors as well. Uh, what do you see when you're looking at it, which would pretty much back up what our officials are telling us? Well, uh, what kills people in hurricanes is they drown. So if you are in a low lying area prone to flooding, get out mm -hmm. because you don't want to drown. Um, and, and if it turns out to be less severe than we thought it would be, all the better. Yeah. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go right over my house. I hope it fizzles, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's going to. You don't think it's going no. to, based on the track? Based on the track, and it's a big storm. It is a big storm, isn't it? A very big storm. You uh, have commented in the past about the, the influence of global warming, perhaps even human influence global warming, in your opinion, on hurricanes. Is there any? Well, climate change, uh, the climate change we're seeing now, which is very rapid, is caused by human influence. It's caused by greenhouse gases. That's, that's com very well established. The physics are, you know, have been known for over 100 years. Um, whether that's having, what impact that's having on hurricanes is still, um, still being studied, uh, in part because it hasn't been happening long enough that, that we can, we can um, de you know, develop trends. But what, what it seems to be doing is making powerful hurricanes more frequent because there's more heat energy in the oceans and in the atmosphere. All right. All right. Dr. Bennington, Associate Professor of Geology at Hofstra University, we appreciate your time. My pleasure. And be safe out there, right? Uh, I'm going to try. All right. Okay.